Hi guys, welcome to TechBased. In this video, we're going to talk about the latest Windows 11 Insider preview build for the Canary channel, which is the build 27718. This is the first build after a whole month without no builds for the Canary channel. So this build has a few interesting new features and improvements that we're going to cover in this video, of course. So if you're interested in these types of videos, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the TechBased channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. So let's begin with the video. First of all, one thing that you have to note is that the expiration date for Insider Preview Builds flighted to the Canary Channel has been updated to September 15th in 2025. So make sure you have the latest version of the Canary Channel because I think that previous builds are pretty close or have gotten to the expiry date. So make sure you have the latest version if of course you're testing Canary Channel builds. First of all, we're going to talk about the File Explorer because Microsoft is starting to add a lot of improvements related to the home page and related to this new section which basically allows you to see shared files. In the Canary channel, we don't have all the new features. In a future video that I'm going to make about the latest better channel build, you're going to see more info about this, but Microsoft is improving the shared section. Basically, you're going to start to notice that you're going to have profile pictures for people that share these files. You can see here files that have been shared to your email account, the same email that you're logged in into your Microsoft account. Of course, for the normal user, this feature may not be necessarily useful, but of course, if you're using Outlook and you're receiving emails, files, and so on. This could be pretty interesting. In the Canary channel, Microsoft also updated the lock screen so that the media controls will now show at the lower bottom center of the lock screen when media is being played, and this is looking pretty good. Related to the start menu, we're getting all the new features from previous builds. For example, you can now drag and drop files to the taskbar from the pinned section. Of course, if you have installed apps here, and also the changes to the start menu account manager have been applied with the sign out button being present here on the main interface. And if you have multiple accounts, you're going to see an option that will let you switch between accounts really easily. Also related to the taskbar system tray, Microsoft updated the taskbar to now support first letter navigation. So when keyboard focus is set to the taskbar, you can press a letter and it will jump to the open or pinned app whose name starts with that letter. So for example, Windows plus T to focus on the taskbar, if you press F, of course, you're going to be focused on the file explorer. Pressing the letter multiple times will jump to the next app, which starts with that letter. If there are multiple apps for that letter and also for for those using on combined taskbar, rather than the app name, the first letter navigation will use the window name. There is also now an option to turn out the suggestions to disable notifications from certain apps. You can also customize that from settings, system, and then notifications, and also from the three points within the notification to disable the notification. Related to the share window, Microsoft is now removing the search box on the Canary channel, so this is a small UI change. In Narrator, Microsoft made several changes to improve the performance of Narrator scan mode. This is expected to make scan mode responses much quicker, especially while using Microsoft Edge and reading through large documents. Also for laptops on battery, a notification will pop up asking you to plug in your laptop if the battery level reaches 20% while Energy Saver is set to always on. Related to Windows Update, Microsoft made some small design improvements to the dialog that opens if there's something that needs your attention before proceeding with a Windows Update. For example, if there's more space needed or there's a compatibility issue, this includes updating the icon sizes and spacing. Related to input, Microsoft Update did the settings Bluetooth and devices touch page to have a new section for touch screen gestures where you can choose if you would like to disable the left or right screen edge touch gesture. Microsoft is also announcing a new upcoming platform which is called Administrator Protection which aims to protect free floating admin rights for administrator users allowing them to still perform all admin functions with just in time admin privileges. We're also getting a new Microsoft Store update which includes app categories. The apps page on the Microsoft Store will now show a new categories experience just under the featured section. Also, we have some new clock widgets, countdown and timer, which you can use in the widgets panel. Now let's talk about some fixes in this build, some general fixes. Microsoft fixed an issue which was causing some insiders to experience a hang at the boost screen and their PC to roll back with error 0 xc 190101 when trying to upgrade to the previous flight. Fixed an issue in the last two canary belts which was causing sporadic explorer.exe crashes when moving windows around. Fixed an issue causing some insiders on the last two canary belts to see a bug check with error message system service exception. Related to input, Microsoft fixed an issue causing the emoji panel to close when trying to switch to the cow emoji and symbol section where after selecting an emoji. Also update the logic for the setting, press the lower right corner, the touchpad to right click in settings and Bluetooth and devices so it shouldn't show in cases where the touchpad doesn't support this functionality. Related to widgets, Microsoft fixed an issue which could result in the widgets icon unexpectedly displaying in the taskbar twice sometimes. And we have some other fixes for 
example, fixed a high hitting WMIPR VSC.exe crash in the last two flights, fixed an issue which was causing certain apps like Media Player to crash when playing audio for some insiders in the last two Canary flights, and also fixed an issue for some insiders with dual boot devices where the boot menu where you select which OS to boot into wasn't displaying correctly, the color was wrong, it might only display in half the available space. That is right, I've encountered this last issue and I'm really glad that it was fixed. So this is the latest Canary build. This is more of a build that will basically set the starting platform for new features that Microsoft is starting to implement in Windows. So of course, right now we can expect features that will roll out in future updates and um, we're gonna see what Microsoft has to bring in the next few months. So don't forget to check out the article below for more information. Also, the ISOs are available for this build and known issues if you're interested. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the TechBase channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. I was your man, your home tech base. Until next time, have a nice day.